If this were gold, it'd be worth a fortune. But it's plastic, and it's piling up in the world's oceans and in the stomachs and digestive systems of all kinds of sea creatures. And it's not just the plastic that's a problem. It's the dangerous and potentially carcinogenic chemicals like PCBs that leach out of the plastics. If you're looking for a kind of legacy story or a footprint of, of human activity, things like PCBs are an ideal thing to look for because they have to have come from, from uh, industrial activity. Jameson set out to test how much plastic is finding its way to the bottom of the ocean. He designed these deep sea landers to run tests. It just falls straight down to the sea floor. So at full ocean depth, uh, 11 kilometers, it will take about four hours in free fall to reach the bottom when it crash lands. And we bait it with, with fish we find in that area so we don't contaminate. And we basically film what, what comes to it. Jameson collected a number of the deep sea dwelling crustaceans called amphipods and tested them for plastics and PCBs. The levels were at face value 50 times higher than what's considered to be one of the most polluted rivers in China. Jameson believes all the contamination is part of the slow rain of stuff constantly falling on the seafloor. His work indicates there are no safe areas of the ocean. It's this idea that you know, very deep, very remote environments are safe, they're pristine, they're kind of out of sight, out of mind, but you know, here we are and you can, you can find man-made contaminants inside the stomachs of an amphipod that's probably only two or three years old. That's, that I think is quite frightening in terms of, of legacy. PCBs were banned almost 40 years ago, but in the deep ocean it will take a long time to degrade naturally. Kevin Enix, VOA News, Washington.